a good plan. You are. You are. You're a good plan. Oh, hey there, guys. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at the new game from Renegade, Succulent, by J. Alex Kevin. If you like abstract tile placement games, this might be a good game for you to check out along the lines of like Juve Rosenberg's Patchwork or Cottage Garden and things like that. This is a light tile placement game for two to four players. Um, yeah, let's jump right into the rules, take a look at the components, and then we'll come back and talk again at the end. Succulent by Renegade Game Studios and J. Alex Kevern. All right, here we are set up for a floor player game. So we're gonna go through the components, talk about all of them real quick. Um, the very first thing you do is you take four of these uh, garden plots, face down, you put them in the middle like this, flip two over, and then you take two more on each side for a total of four more so that you use all eight garden plots and have them on the outsides. Then you take your uh, cutting pieces. We'll take a look at those real quick. These are nice little wooden cuttings that you'll use throughout the game. Um, here's the components if you're curious what those look like. Those are your wooden cutting pieces. Um, then you have your water tokens, which are little plastic pieces. There we go. And have those both within reach, both the water and the cutting. And then you have your garden tokens, which are over here. Uh, the garden tokens come in singles, doubles, and triples. Have those all sorted out to the right of your game area. But once you've done that, you're going to take your cards here, your uh, project cards. You're going to lay out a number. Six if you have four players like this. Five if you have a two or three player game. After shuffling, and you lay out your projects for the game. Each player then gets their own greenhouse. Let's take a look at one of the greenhouses. Uh, they are different boards, but it doesn't matter which one you get except for um, starting. Or if you have a particular uh, succulent that you want on your greenhouse, I guess. Um, the back's just that. but. Greenhouse board, put that in front of each player. Each player is also going to start with a single and a double from the garden plots. They're going to get a player color. So this one is the, uh, I don't know what we'll call that, nude or, I don't know, light pink, I don't know, something like that. Um, and then they get a number of flowers depending on the number of players. Here I'm grabbing to show you. This player is the white player their little um, garden tool. Each player has a different garden tool. My favorite being the spray bottle. Oh, no, can you see? Yeah. I love meeples. And this is a, a, a meeple token. There we go. There's the spray bottle. So each player gets their different uh, flower color that will correspond with their player color in the game. And we're all set up for a four player game of Succulent. Let's talk about gameplay now. Okay, so in this setup, this player is going to be the first player mainly because they got the player board that has the A on it. Let's zoom in on that. There's the little A in the bottom right hand corner. You can find that to see who's the starting player. On every uh, turn, you're going to do two things you're going to perform an action and then complete a project. Once you've done that, your turn ends and the next player's turn begins. On your turn, what does it mean to perform an action? To perform an action, first of all, you have to do it. You don't have a choice whether you want to do it or not. But you're either going to place a flower bed or gain flower beds. So let's pretend that this person is going to place a flower bed this time. So in order to place a flower bed, we take the flower bed, place it on the garden somewhere. That's what we've highlighted here. And for every um, succulent that you cover over on the garden, you will get a water droplet if you cover that, and you will get a um, succulent cutting of that type. So let's pretend this person uses their two. So they're going to use this two. Let's see, zoom out a little bit there. They're going to use their two, and they're going to place it on the board. Uh, maybe let's say that they place it here and here because they're not sure what to do. So they place that there, Let's zoom in, if you can see, they are going to get a black and a green cutting. So we go ahead and take those cuttings, the black and the green and cutting, and because they also covered two water droplets, 
they're going to get two of those water droplets. So that comes into their personal supply. Um, we'll put that right up here so you can see that. So they have that in their personal supply, um, not for everyone else. That's the first option of things that they can do. Rules for placement of those garden uh, beds, like this one, uh, are this. Flower beds cannot overlap with other flower beds. Flower beds can't cover spaces on face down garden plots and flower beds can't overhang the outer edges of the garden itself. So this would be illegal. Um, if there was another one down already, you can't place it on top like that. Just use common sense. Um, and they, you, you're not gonna be able to go off the edge like this either, okay? So none of that. None of those things are legal placements. Also on your turn, if you cover the last droplet, so the droplets are printed on the board. Let's move this around a little bit. So let's say we went back to this configuration. This is here, and then the third player were to um, cover the last droplet like that. That third player will then flip over a new tile. So how do I know that this is my garden space? Well, I'm gonna take my uh, flower tile that I had earlier, and that goes in that little round hole in the garden to know that I was the one that placed it there. All players are gonna gain a small droplet for each of their flowers that is adjacent to the new flower bed. So let's say the, uh, the pink was already here, like this. For some reason, we've already been playing for a while. We're gonna just say that. And then when I do that, uh, because the white player placed here, the pink player has a pink flower adjacent to that one, they're going to get one of those uh, small water droplets and place it in their inventory. All right, so that's how we place the garden bed. All right, so what do you do on your turn if you're out of the just garden plots? The second thing that you can do in order to get more garden plots is you can take your token and place it on one of these project cards and then get the um, garden plots that are shown on there. So let's say you need some ones and threes, like on this card. You would take your little gardener token, place it on there, and then you would receive the one and the three garden plot tokens to use in the future. That's how you get more. It's good to know that you can't keep more than six flower buds of any kind at a time or ten cuttings in your inventory area. You're allowed to go over that limit during your turn, but by the end of your turn you have to discard down to that hard limit of six or ten if you have more than that. The second thing that you can do on your turn besides uh, doing those garden plots um, is you can take your cuttings, so in this case it would be purple, green, orange, red, and black, which we have here. Spin those to build this project. If you complete or build this project, then you're going to get the bonus shown on the card. And also, you remove the gardener token, so let's say the white did this, they're going to send this garden token back here, and this player, the pink player, is going to get a large droplet as a bonus for having their gardener token on there. So why would you do that? Well, you spent your your cuttings to do that. And then at the end of the game you're going to get nine points plus immediately you get a small droplet. Let's talk about those droplets. Alright, in addition to getting droplets from the board, you can also get droplets by completing those project cards. So as you get droplets, you can use them to make cuttings of any type. This player, for example, could get an orange cutting when they need to complete a project by spinning the two small droplets and then they would only have the large droplet there. As you can see, that corresponds to the orange color. Why would you want to keep these on there instead of spinning them? Well, any droplet on your board that has uh, been filled, any droplet space that has been filled at the end of the game is worth a certain number of points as shown on the card. 2, 2, 1, 3, so forth. So getting droplets on your board is both a resource that you're going to use and points at the end of the game. Be aware of that as you're playing. As you play the game, each greenhouse, everybody has a greenhouse with nine scoring spaces. Every scoring space has a point value. At the end of the game, you score points for all the scoring spaces that contain large droplets. Scoring spaces that contain small droplets aren't scored. So, yeah, you'll want to spin those um, so that you can get the large droplets. As you get the large droplets, they'll go, you'll want to fill up those. 
Large droplets don't get spit, but it can be used to get those uh, cuttings. So, what triggers the end of the game? The end of the game is triggered when one player has placed their last flower on the board, or, or somebody has completed a certain number of projects. In a four-player game, that would be six completed projects. In a three-player game, that's seven. And in a two-player game, it's eight completed projects. When at least one of those in-game triggers has occurred, you finish the current round, so everybody gets to play one more, and then the player seated to the right of the start player takes the final turn of the game. For final scoring, you're going to want to count the following. Completed projects, scoring spaces, and remaining items. For completed projects, add up the point values for all projects that you have completed in front of you that are just yours. So this one would be 9 points. And then some might have a variable point value, so be aware of that based on the conditions that are in your garden, in your greenhouse, or in any of your completed projects. The second thing, after you've done those completed projects, then look at scoring spaces. Add up the point values for all the scoring spaces in your greenhouse. So these are your greenhouses, remember. Let's zoom in on that again. All right, and we'll get a little bit cut. Okay, so this here is a scoring space on your greenhouse. Add up the point values for all the scoring spaces in your greenhouse that contain a large droplet. The difference between the large droplet, and I know it's kind of hard to see here, uh, but this is a large droplet and this, the lighter blue, is a small droplet. There is a difference in size, too. Score half of your points uh, for each flower bed in your inventory, cutting your cutting inventory and each small droplet in your greenhouse. So you're going to count up how many small, um, sorry, small droplets that you have, each cutting that you have, and each flower bed, and divide that in half, and you'll get points for that. Again, as a reminder, it's total number of items added together and then rounded down. So, in this case, if the player had three flowers remaining and then one small droplet, they would have a total of four items divided by um, half, which is two. So they'd have two total points at the end of the game. After you've done all that, count up remaining items, whether it is your um, cuttings, your small droplets, or places filled on your player boards. You will take all that and find out who has the most points, including half points, and that person's the winner. It's a really pretty simple game. So in the case of a tied, the tied player with the most flowers in their garden, in the shared garden, is the winner. All right, some final thoughts on this game. Uh, I like the artwork. I think the artwork's cute. Um, there are a couple things that are non-intuitive about this if you're not used to um, some of the things, even though it's a light game, it will take a little bit getting used to, but I like the artwork. It's nice and bright. Um, the pieces uh, punched out well. They're nice and thick. Good good uh, pieces there. I like the uh, water droplets. I like all the aesthetics about it. Um, overall, I think it's a good pick for a lighter filler tile placement game that's going to feel different than the UV Rosenberg ones that we mentioned at the beginning. Um, but let me know your thoughts. Let me know whether you've tried Succulent, what, what you like about it, what you don't, what you're concerned about the gameplay. Thanks. Succulent by J. Alex Kevern. Check it out. We'll see you later.